thank you, Canoe family, for the beautiful song. And um, I'd just like to thank the governor for taking the time to come out and come to Swinomish and Senator Rolfs and Rolfs, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I got Rolfs in, in my mind. I can't. And uh, thank our tribal leaders from uh, other tribes who are in attendance, as well as, <clears throat> you know, other tribes and uh, all the guests here today, and especially the Wolver family. Thank you. And I will. Um, turn it over to the governor now so we could get started on um, we have a long agenda here so we'll get you started and we welcome you governor Jay Inslee thank you thank you we're going to cover you with a we're going to cover you with a oh <laughs> Mr. Chairman and friends, this is an honor. I know that everybody here is envious of this blanket right now. <laughs> Mr. Chair, thank you and your people for welcoming us here. Thank you, our, our wonderful uh, canoe singers. This is a huge honor for me to, to join you here today to say some things. And the first thing I want to say is there is nothing more Washingtonian than celebrating salmon and committing to their survival. There is nothing that more unites us because we are all people of the salmon in the state of Washington. They are part of our family legacies. They are part of our geographic legacies. They are who we are and closest to our hearts. So isn't it a great thing to be able to say today that on a cold day in the Swinomish, we're gonna make sure that salmon have cold water to swim in for time immemorial. I think this is a commitment we are happy to make. And it is the perfect place to do so in the home of Lorraine Loomis, who represented the best of us when it came to salmon and being able to work together for them. We know that the salmon are challenged in their very survival. They have been challenged for some time. And in the recent years, it has become more severe because of the forces of climate change in multiple ways layered upon all of the other challenges that they have experienced. We know that our orca are dependent on them. And we know that as the orca go, so go we. So we are today announcing a new strategic mission to save these salmon for all of us on a comprehensive basis at a scale that the effort is required and on a sustained basis for the decades to come. Nothing less is adequate to the task at hand. We know that this has to happen this year. It has to happen this year because the time is short. The first Snake River Chinook salmon were declared endangered 30 years ago. And since then, 13 more stocks have been listed as endangered since then. There is no more time when it comes to salmon. So on behalf of our tribal communities, we will act. On behalf of our recreational fishers, we will act. On behalf of our commercial industry, we will act. And on behalf of our grandchildren, we will act this session of the legislature. And we're here today to talk about how to do that. Our proposal is comprehensive. It doesn't deal with just one of the things the salmon need. They need habitat, so we will act to improve habitat. They need some appropriate operation of our hydro system, and we will move in that direction. We need more efficient hatcheries, and we need to know that we have to have enforcement of our harvest laws 
to really have science-based harvest, harvest provisions. And what we are proposing touches on all of those efforts. Our proposals are based on science that has to guide our decisions, not ideology. And that is the foundation of our proposals. We start with our salmon agenda by proposing $187 million of investments, not a small sum, but every one of these dollars is necessary. It will advance many of the needs that have been identified in this new statewide strategy on all uh, four points of the compass that I talked about. It's a sad fact that in our state, or we are losing more habitat than we are restoring every year. And we know that climate change has exacerbated those habitat changes by warming the waters and making it sometimes impossible to salmon to survive. Think about it. In places last summer and this fall in our state, salmon could not swim up the rivers because they could not survive the hot water temperatures as they moved upstream. We can do everything we want in habitat, but we have to act on climate as well to give our fish a chance. And that's why I'm glad yesterday we proposed and legislators joined me the most aggressive climate actions in the state history so our salmon will have cool water. And I'm glad we do that. But we need habitat along the shoreline as well to keep this water cool. Now I want to thank Lorraine Loomis for her efforts to inspire us to all work together in this regard. Habitat is a job for everybody in the state of Washington because in some way or another, we all touch salmon habitat. So I am proposing that we call this the, the Lorraine Loomis Act to honor her legacy, to honor her commitment, and to take a sec essential action along our stream beds and our rivers in the state of Washington. This act will apply a commonly accepted scientific standard to conserve and restore habitat along our rivers and streams. We're going to prohibit new development in areas where it would be inconsistent with the need to restore and protect these habitats. And we will work with landowners in areas where scientists think that salmon tap need the most help with the highest priority right now. It will also provide a pathway for integrating the same standard with local planners under the Growth Management Act and our Shoreline Management Act. This act, the Lorraine Loomis Act, is a result of two years of discussions between the state and tribes and presents a transformative change on how we improve habitat to, remeet, to meet our recovery goals. We've got to, restru to restore these green corridors Essentially, that's how we have to think of our streams, as green corridors, if salmon are going to have a chance, because they have to have cool, clean water to survive. Our legislation sets a blueprint based on a unique e ecology that we have enjoyed, and every one of these streams is a unique ecology. This proposal sets a minimum required riparian habitat corridor, which is based on the height of trees that historically grow on those corridors that are dependent on the specific conditions of each stream and river. I'm also proposing $100 million to launch a new grant program to conserve and restore critical riparian uh, lands along these high priority uh, watersheds. Funds will go to riparian habitat restoration and conservation projects, such as revegetating degraded riparian areas to keep water cool on the banks. Now, te water temperature is not the only threat to salmon, obviously. Toxic runoff, low oxygen levels also threaten our salmon. So I'm proposing that we invest in reducing wastewater pollution and more capacity in projects that clean up stormwater runoff. And we focus on pollution hotspots and spurring more public-private partnerships to treat more stormwater in more innovative ways. This includes additional action on toxic chemical tires that kill coho salmon and disrupt their navigational ability. I'm proposing funding to explore safer alternatives and evaluate whether current stormwater actions are enough to look for efficient means. You know, we've had a tremendous scientific breakthrough to identify the chemical 
that is so dangerous. Now it's time to protect salmon from that dangerous chemical. We also know low water flows are a threat to our salmon. Low water flows in summer and higher dangerous flows like the floods we experienced in the Nooksack in the winter. We're currently seeing this in our state all too often, and it will become worse because of climate change. These conditions stress salmon because of high water temperatures in the summer, and they destroy spawning habitat in the winter floods. That's why I'm proposing investing $5 million in green infrastructure projects that help store water during high flows and release it during critical low flow uh, uh, times. This is gonna help make us more resilient against the effects of climate change. Now this needs to be a statewide effort. And one of the things that has to be statewide is to continue our work in removing salmon barriers that are physical barriers to prevent salmon from spawning. We have been active in this regard, but we've got more work to do. My proposal puts another $27 million into salmon harvest monitoring enforcement as well, to both expand and improve the systems we have. It would put another $5 million into hatchery program improvements and more investments to protect salmon populations in the Skagit and Upper Quinault restoration. Funding would also be designed to permit new uh, state hatchery and learning center on the Deschutes River uh, in uh, Olympia. We're also going to address, as I've, I've noted, our, our fish barriers. Uh, that includes looking at the potential reintroduction, reintroduction above Chief Joseph and Grand Coulee Dams and continuing to support the process and dialogue around the state river dams. Uh, as you know, my budget includes funding to assess whether there are reasonable means for replacing the services of the four lower Snake River dams. Senator Murray and I are working on this regard and I appreciate her leadership. And we're gonna look forward to working with the Columbia River Collaborative to improve fish conditions. We're also gonna spend $1.5 million this year to assess hydro impacts on the Snake and Columbia Rivers. And obviously, as you know, we've taken multiple steps to improve our hydro operations to make them more fish friendly. By the way, I've noted all the money that I've just spent, but I can't spend any of it without Senator Rolfus, too. I want to make sure that we all represent that. I know I'm a little ahead of the curve here, Senator, but we'll look forward to working together on this. Um, look, when it comes to culverts, we've done a lot, but we simply have to continue to do much more. We've invested over a billion dollars to remove culverts. We've removed 86 barriers. We've improved access to 383 miles of upstream habitat for salmon. But this biennium, we've got to do more. We're beginning construction on another 116 fish barrier and designs for another 150. But it is not enough yet, and we need to continue these efforts. And I will be vigorous in my advocacy to continue these investments. I think it's really important to note this. With all our struggles with salmon, when we do these things, they work. If you build salmon habitat, they will come. Look at what's happening on the Elwha. Look at what's happening when we have removed these culverts. The salmon are courageous. They were resilient. If you give them half a chance, they'll come back. But we need to give them more than half a chance. And that's what we're doing by removing these culverts. So I want to thank everybody for their efforts in this regard. I have to tell you that this is close to my heart. It's close to the Inslee family heart. I remember uh, just off these waters, when I was a kid, I was about six years old out in a little skiff fishing with my dad in the fog. And all of a sudden I heard this like deep breathing sound, just this whoosh, whoosh. And I asked my dad, what is that? And he said, I think it's a whale. I think it's a killer whale. We call them killer whales instead of orcas. And when you're a six-year-old hearing that sound, it stays with you for seven years so far. And then we eventually saw that tall fin going around the boat. That's a memory that I have, and it's one I want my grandchildren to have, my great-grandchildren. And they won't be able to have that memory if, it, if we don't succeed in restoring our salmon. So I want to thank everybody here for the work we're going to do in the next several months with our legislature. I want to thank Senator Rolfus, who's going to help lead this effort. Uh, I want to thank... Uh, um, Alyssa Macy with the Washington Environmental Council, I, I know will be active 
and everyone else who can pull on this rope. With this, I want to introduce Kim Murphy, the daughter of the great Lorraine Loomis, and I look forward to signing a bill with this name on it. Come on up. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the daughter of Lorraine Loomis, and I'm proud to be here. On behalf of my uncles, Vince and Marvin Wilbur, and the rest of our family, we would like to thank you for this wonderful day, this wonderful event. My mom worked so hard for our people and all the tribes. Although she worked so many hours, she always found time for her family. Family and community meant everything to her, and that is why she worked so hard so we can continue our treaty rights long after she is gone. My mom wasn't working for just today, but for the next generations to come. Mom would always say when a new grandchild was born, this one is gonna take over for me. They're gonna continue the fight we started so many years ago, and our fight is simple, to be able to practice our culture and feed our spirit with the foods we are accustomed to. Like so many of you, we miss our mom, Graham, every day, we would give anything to have her beside us, to guide us and to love us again. We know she is still watching over us and stands with us today. We are honored and humbled that her legacy will live on in this act. To our Swinomish Tribal Senate, our family is so thankful that you were able to have this event, that you recognize our mom's efforts for all these years and you keep her spirit alive. To Amy Trainer, thank you for taking the time to meet with us and explain the process. We love that you work so closely with our mom and that you know what she wanted and needed. And you work so hard with the help of many people to put this together. Our family thanks all of you. JT, who is not here today, I want to thank for sharing a phone call with me, sharing a little of the other side of my mom, knowing my mom fought for many years to get something like this in the works. Governor Inslee, we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to come to our community. We are honored. We wrap you in these blankets today to thank you, and we send you back with the strength of our ancestors. May you feel the love of our community, and you take this journey to save the salmon. Thank you very much. Okay, now I would like to turn the mic over to Christine Rolfe. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Kim, for joining us today. It's very special to have you here. Uh, my name is Christine Rolfus, and I'm a state senator from the Kitsap Peninsula in the central part of Puget Sound. And it was my honor to be invited here, and it was really a pleasure to make the trip over today. Um, for those of you who are who get to live here, you may not even notice the grandeur right now of the snow geese in the fields um, as you cut across here from I-5. And like the salmon that we're celebrating and committing ourselves to today, the snow geese have thousands of miles of migration um, that they also have to endure to survive. And I found it really inspiring to witness them this morning on my way here. I also want to thank the um, Swinomish community. Thank you all for being here today to lead an effort in the legislature on salmon will be a tremendous journey for my House colleagues and my Senate colleagues. And we are going to need your backing and your support and your wisdom every step of the way. So thank you to all of you for joining us today. And in particular, I want to thank Governor Inslee and the members of his staff for putting together what this state has needed for decades, which is a strategic and bold plan for getting the job done and sustaining success for decades to come. This is a bold and strategic set of actions to restore salmon habitat and salmon populations. And as has been um, referred to today, I'm the chair right now of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, which is the committee that writes the budget in the legislature. And I know that the investments that the governor just laid out are 
important, they're key to driving the kind of change that we need to see. And I know that many of my colleagues in the Senate will share those priorities and will share that objective. So I'm really proud to be one of the leaders on this effort this year in the session. I'm really pleased to be working with Representative Lakanoff on this venture. And our session gets underway in less than a month. And I know, I'm confident that we can get the job done. So as we know, the populations of salmon sustain the people of this area and of our state for thousands of years. And the species is intertwined, the fate of the species is intertwined with all the people of our states, past, present, and future. And ultimately, the health of the salmon is a reflection on our own well-being. Their success will be our success. So it gives me great hope to be gathered here today in your community with so many people dedicated to healing and restoring our state's natural resources and bringing these salmon back to the levels that we need them to be in order to sustain all of us.
And I can remember coming up here about two weeks after he passed away, and you guys were having your first air, salmon ceremony. And I remember Lorraine insisted that I come up, and it, it made me feel good, because at that time I was going through some, uh, some trying times. And thinking back to when I was a kid, I can remember coming up here in a float plane uh, with my dad. I was probably six or seven years old, and here we are today. Kind of comes full circle of what we're doing. And you're seeing the next generation here. You see all of the grandkids and the kids, great grandkids. And uh, you know what we need to do here in the state, Governor. You know the the riparian issue is huge. You know that. You committed to that in 2019. We're running out of time. I think we're past the, uh, the point of uh, emergency right now when it comes to our salmon habitat, when it comes to our clean water. I am a fisherman on the Nisqually River. My father, he was fishing at 81. That's what gives me this strength to come out every day. And Auntie Lorraine, you know, uh, when, I, when I heard the day, the day that she passed, it blew my mind because you take it, you, you take it advantage of it because you think you're going to have our elders for so much longer. But you can't get mad or angry or upset because we know what our path is. We know what the vision our elders laid out for us. And now it's just up to us as this next generation. And uh, I've been on tribal council 11 years. And I, I used to be the young guy. Like now I'm getting to be the older guy on council. It happens, yeah. You know, and thinking about you know the, the great leaders up here, you know, who I grew up admiring. You know, Governor, you, we've lost two of our our greatest leaders here for our tribes in your term, in your term as governor. You know, with my father and, and of course Lorraine. You know, the the commitment that that we hear and the commitment we're all here to talk about is making sure that these next generations have salmon. We can do all the talking we want. We can commit all the money we want. It's going to take everybody here coming together to work for our salmon. We're going to have to be the voice of Mr. Salmon. You know, we, we're out of time. Our elders, it's sad to hear our elders talk about the way it used to be when they used to go fishing for chum. Or hobo, or chinook. I've never caught a steelhead on the Nisqually River. You know, and Lorraine used to always tell me the good stories about you guys fishing. And I saw the passion. And I can remember in 2018, Governor, when you sent JT down to uh, Sacramento to, to help finish up Northern Falcon. You know, and, and it's unfortunate JT's not here, um, but your staff and, and everybody else here, you know, um, you know, stay committed to, to moving forward with our tribes. You know, we, we don't have any more time. We have to get moving now. Dave Herrera is here today, and I, I want to recognize Dave for the work that he's done on this riparian issue. It, it's really, you know, our, our tribes have, we have the, the scientists. We have the guys ready to go. So, you know, as co-managers, we need to, to come together and really get serious about this issue. And I think this is going to be a good start. We have a lot of work to do. But before I finish here, the real co-management governor would be giving me a ride up here on your plane. <laughs> because you left from Olympia, obviously, so you could have you shot a call to me, you know, next time maybe. <laughs> but but in, in all seriousness, though, you know, I thank the family and Chairman Edwards for giving me this time. I thought I was just coming up as a witness today, but I'm uh, very honored to be here in the homelands of Swinomish. And, uh, I feel like Lorraine is really testing us today with this wind and weather. You know, I, I was telling uh, Tandy earlier and JJ, I was like, man, no wonder why I don't fish chum anymore. You know, it is cold out here, but you know, hearing those drums, we haven't heard those drums in a while because of, uh, of COVID. You know, so our canoe journey and our, you know, culture and way of life, you know, that's what we got to get back to. I told Glenn, honestly, I didn't feel the cold when you guys were drumming. You know, it was something to hear those drums, and it's just this river and everything that, that feeds our soul. So I thank you, Governor, for, you know, this, uh, getting this started. We have a long way to go, and the Nisqually tribe, I know, is committed, and uh, let's get to work. Thank you. All right, wait a sec here. I gotta introduce uh, our next speaker. 
who is uh, somebody that I admire and somebody I, uh, I listen to all the time. And I respect Glenn very much. And, uh, you know, hearing Glenn's stories on, on days when I'm having a, a tough go at Nisqually, Glenn's always somebody who picks up the phone. So I want to introduce uh, Tulalip's Vice Chairman, Glenn Gobin. First off, let me say, as of today, this is probably the best blanket I've ever received. <laughs> it's uh, a little out of tradition to get it first, but it was well received, let me tell you. <laughs> um, first off, I want to thank everybody for showing up on this day and recognizing what this means for our habitat, for our resources, for our um, recovery of salmon. And we have to stay positive and focused on that recovery. It is doable, but it's going to take that action. I raise my hands to the governor for taking this bold step, because it is a bold step to stand up and say, I'm going to put together a salmon recovery plan and bring it forward. And it's going to take work from all of us to help him get this across the line. I want to thank him also, and each and every one here, for listening to the words of Billy Frank and Lorraine. And, what, and thank them for what they brought down from their past ancestors. Bringing forward the words of, it's not about today, it's about the next generations. And we are here for the next generations. The recovery that's going to take place, we may not see it in our lifetime, but our children may, and hopefully our grandchildren certainly will, and the next generations, and have that value of growing up and knowing what it's like to have salmon, to have orca, killer whales, call a H in our language, and to be able to appreciate those things that we have taken for granted. But also, we, and, just, and I say that because we're predominantly of the same generation, we grew up seeing and seeing the changes that are transpiring today at a greater rate than any time before. When the governor brings this forward about the actions are needed, they're needed now. And they need involvement. When I think about Lorraine and naming this the Lorraine Loomis Act, it's so appropriate. Because Lorraine did more than just talk about it. She fought for over 40 years to implement the things that she talked about so we would have something so we could survive, so we could maintain who we are as a people. And I say that not just as a native person, but we as a people that enjoy these things around us. It is not tribes that can save this fight. It's not just Washington State. It's all of us. All of us have to be committed. All of us have to participate. As co-managers of this resource, of the habitat, of the harvest of salmon. Every aspect is shared. It's a shared, shared responsibility to, as we go forward to save the salmon, to save what we've all gathered unto ourselves as what our life values are, and to build upon that. But it's going to take all of us doing this together. It's easy to put the words forward. And again, Lorraine did more than just put the words for it. She took active involvement. We need active involvement. We need action now. The proposal that comes forward is going to have to have swift action to start implementing as quickly as possible to start to see these changes. And we're here to help in any way that we can, Governor. We'll be there to help lobby for this legislation and tell our stories of why this is important and why it's important to everyone, not just us, to everyone in order to save this. And so for me, it's an honor to be here and stand and speak on behalf of this bill, but also on behalf of the values that we, are, we have had handed down to us from previous leaders like Lorraine and the honor for her to have this bill named after her. And so I thank you for this opportunity and the time to share and uh, let's, let's go to work. Exactly. <laughs> 
So I'm going to call up um, Kelly Sustrin, uh, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Oh, he's not here. Okay. So who's next then? Alyssa Macy, CEO of um, Washington Environmental Council. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not going to take my mask off because my teeth might chatter. It's a little chilly today. Uh, I am Ima Naimuma, Wanisha Alyssa Macy, Tananawit, Wasco Navajo Hopi, Shitaikini Ashwa. Good afternoon. My name is Alyssa Macy. I'm a citizen of the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs, Oregon. It's also where I grew up. I'm the CEO of Washington Environmental Council and Washington Conservation Voters. I've been in this role for almost two years. Salmon are central to the life of the Pacific Northwest, to tribal peoples, to all peoples, to our economy, our way of life, and have been for centuries. Puget Sound salmon populations have declined by 90% from historic levels, and that has impacted so many communities, tribal and non-tribal. Fishing is on the decline. Treaty rights continue to be at risk and orcas are starving their way into extinction. Protection and recovery of salmon is a moral and a treaty obligation and an obligation under the Endangered Species Act. Recovering salmon is a, responsi a responsibility of people throughout the state to sovereign native nations. In the face of warming climate impacting our region, the future for salmon looks grim. Salmon need cool, clean water to survive. Warmer rivers are a death sentence for salmon. In 2015, warm water killed 250,000 Columbia River sockeye, fish that my people could not harvest. Many streams and rivers throughout the state are simply too hot due to the fact that they don't have any coverage along the banks. Who would we be without salmon? Are we willing to take the risk to find out the answer to that question? The risk that falls on the shoulders of indigenous peoples of this state, our nieces, our nephews, our grandchildren, our spirit, our culture, our souls in many ways. A monumental, excuse me, I am really cold. <laughs> I'm like shaking. <laughs> a monumental champion for Washington salmon, Lorraine Loomis, may have asked herself that same question. She was a giant in our community, a Swinomish tribal elder, a chairperson of the Northwest Indian Fisheries Commission, and a manager of fisheries for the Swinomish Indian tribal community. She has left a legacy and will continue to inspire so many of us in this work. It is why this act bears her name. The Lorraine Loomis Act is rooted in traditional ecological knowledge and the best available science and will make a major difference by addressing and investing in the cool streams that salmon need. It relies on a really simple solution in front of us grow and maintain trees and shade continuously along your favorite river or creek or other vital waterway. Maintaining and growing healthy trees can more than offset warming due to increases in air temperature. Think about that. On a hot day standing under a tree, I am thinking about that hot day right now, um, standing under a tree is much cooler than standing out under the sun. That's why salmon and people need trees. It really is that simple. But without bold action now, salmon face a bleak future today and for generations to come. Despite the salmon recovery crisis, I remain hopeful. I am grateful for the work of Governor Inslee and the Washington's uh, tribal leadership, the Native Nations, to meet this critical moment. Tribes have been calling for practical and pragmatic step for years, for decades even. We know what we need to do. WEC and WCB hear from our members all the time that we need to do more for salmon. And this is the time. This is the moment. We must pass the Lorraine Loomis Act in strong form and during the 2022 legislative session. 
It will be hard work, and there will pe be people who say we can't do it. But I believe that we can. I believe that we can. It is what the people of the state expect from leaders. They expect you to lead. What can you do? Contact your legislators and ask them, urge them to support and pass this bill. Join us and join in the work. Talk to your friends and your neighbors. Encourage them to get involved in every way possible. Get connected with organizations like ours and others that are working on this bill to stay updated and to stay mobilized. And please sign up during public hearings and make your support visible and your voices heard. My people made a sacred obligation to our relative, Waikanish, the salmon, that we would take care of them as they have taken care of us. That commitment is part of my spirit. It is part of what guides me in the work that I do. It is a guiding principle in my life, and it's what connects me to the woman, as a woman of Inchiwana, the Columbia River, to the Swinomish people and other Native nations in the state. We are in this together. We are relatives. We have an opportunity to take care of our relative, Waikanish, the salmon, through the Lorraine Loomis Act, and I hope that you will join me and all of us here to move this forward. It is so humbling to be asked to be a part, to share some words, to be here with all of you in your community. Thank you so much for the invitation. Nice. For, yeah, it, it is chilly. Uh, so uh, I'd like to also welcome everybody here today um, to Swinomish and uh, it, um, yeah, it's a cold one. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about summer myself. Um, yeah, let, welcome everybody here to Swinomish. And um, you know, I don't know if I have my, my I, I, I'm, I'm Jeremy Wilbur. Uh, J.J. Wilbur, uh, my Indian name, my traditional name is Cutsfoot Seventh Generation. I carry that from my grandfather, Claude Wilbur Sr., who was a lifelong fisherman here at Swinomish, and uh, a mentor uh, to my Aunt Lorraine, as well as Uncle Vince and Uncle Marvin, uh, my Uncle Bobby. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, talk, a lot of good words uh, put on the floor here today. Um, by tribal leaders and state officials. Uh, Senator Rolfus, we are extremely happy to have you here today and on board, uh, you know, with, with pushing this legislation. You know, I'd just like to say a few words um, on who Aunt Lorraine was. I mean, I got a whole list of talking points I can actually talk about, but I think the most important thing that I can say is, um, you know, she, um, she had a passion uh, for the people of Swinomish and for fishing. And, um, you know, she wore a lot of hats in this community. Uh, you know, she was a tribal senator for many years. She was, she, she was uh, you know, she started the, the bingo hall and the casino here back in the day. And, uh, but one of the most important roles she had here at Swinomish was as fisheries manager. And um, she was just, I can't tell you how passionate, you saw the passion over the years, Governor Inslee. And um, I'll never forget, I, I uh, you know, got, uh, was elected to serve our people, elected to the tribal senate about four years ago. And um, Aunt Lorraine drug me down to Olympia, uh, you know, to push riparian. Actually, uh, Amy Trainer and uh, Larry Wasserman was still here at that point in time, and they kicked me out and said, you know, get down there and talk to the governor. You're a leader now. You need to come down and push riparian. And I made a couple jokes to the governor. He didn't back twice. He didn't even look at me. I remember, you know, he's like looking directly at Aunt Lorraine, you know, and, and talking to her. But, um, uh, you know, it was just such a passion of hers, riparian issues and, uh, you know, conservation and restoration. And so we are extremely happy here at Swinomish when the governor, I mean, it's, it's just such a great honor, not just to the family, but to the community that you honor Aunt Lorraine in the way you have. When you called, JT Austin called uh, 
my cousin Cameron offered up, you know, called it the Lorraine Loomis Act. I mean, it was such a great thing. And since then, in short notice, we've all been scrambling the Northwest Indian Fish Commission, tribal leaders, and especially our folks here at Swinomish to make sure we have in this bill what, what needs to be in it to honor her. You know, um, and I've talked about her roles uh, here at Swinomish, and, and I think some of the most important ones. I, I grew up with actually Aunt Lorraine, I lived at her house. Here on the reservation, we move around from house to house to house as kids. That's just what we do. And I spent a few years living with Aunt Lorraine, uh, it, you know, back in my teen years in high school. And me and uh, my late cousin, their little brother, Ronnie Loomis, and uh, we couldn't. I couldn't tell you how often she was gone. We loved her. She was gone out of the house, traveling to Canada, traveling to Olympia. She was all over the place. We had the house to ourselves. It was great. But uh, I won't tell you what we were doing uh, when she was gone. But, um, you know, just a testament to how long she's been, how hard. That was 25, 30 years ago. Uh, how long, how hard she's been working and traveling on behalf of Sam and here at Swinomish. So, you know, auntie, grandmother, you know, uh, sister. You know, she had a lot of very important roles here at Swinomish. So once again, Governor, thank you so much. Tribal leaders, thank you so much for your words. Um, Chairman, thank you for bringing this to Swinomish here today. And, uh, you know, Aunt Lorraine, this is the view she had for 40 years. Uh, just right on the other side of the office is there when we, her office sits and looks out over this view. So what, it couldn't be a better place to, to have this event here today. So once again, thank you. I'd like to thank Aurelia and the Culture Department here for with their help today. Um, give them a hand. I'd like to thank, um, make sure I thank Fred Caillou and the, the Public Works Department that helped set all this up for us here today. And uh, so with that, I will thank Amy, thank all the staff, the Swinomish staff that was involved here today. And uh, with that, I'm going to give up the mic so that uh, we can keep moving along here on freezing. So thank you very much. <laughs> Who's after me? Governor Isley and partner stand for questions from media is what the, what the, what the itinerary says. Oh, we are going to do the, the blankets. Bless you. Okay, the culture, uh, the culture staff would like to um, call up Kim, Jim, John, and Tandy. Governor, uh, we have one of our uh, councilmen who would like to, has a little gift for you. Uh, before I do this, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, everybody who helped make this happen today, just want to thank you. And I, I met uh, you, Governor, when uh, Deborah signed her first bill as a as a representative, so I just wanted to thank you for this work that you just done, and want to present this to you. Governor, um, do you, is there any uh, questions for the governor or staff or representatives here today? Okay, I guess we're going to do uh, the, the media on the way out, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up today, but I just want to once again just thank Governor Inslee, Senator, the representatives, our tribal leaders, 
and our Sunamish tribal leaders who are in attendance today as well, and our <clears throat> membership, and uh, all of our visitors, and especially the family. We know how difficult this is, but it also is a part of our healing, and it, and this will be something that could be carried on for generations to come, and those those next generations will be able to see the work that has taken place and will take place, and we, um, on behalf of the governor and the Wilbur family. So once again, thank you all for coming today and bearing this weather and. I just want to thank the governor's staff, our staff, for putting together um, the work that you did on behalf of Lorraine. And, you know, this is very, very important to our people and our fishermen, not just to all tribes. And we must continue to fight for these salmon, the recovery, the habitat. We have to, we can't stop. Lorraine didn't put 40 plus years into this for us to walk away. We're gonna keep fighting. So thank, once again, thank you all for all the wonderful words and your presence it means a lot, especially to this family. Everybody safe travels and go ahead and go warm up. <laughs>